what's going on y'all good morning it's chicken ready <laughs> i'm taking a little walkie walk with garby this morning you know what i'm saying and um no garby let's go this way come on um i thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about my six months in st croix and i swear i hope that um that you can actually hear this the audio i hope it's okay it's a little bit windy out here i didn't expect it to be windy like this it's a little windy out so i hope that uh that i don't get home and like you can't hear none of this video matter of fact i'm gonna just go ahead and pause it right here just so i can listen and make sure that it's all right Okay, so from what I can see, it's not terrible, but it's also not great. Um, the wind isn't blowing too bad right now, so let's get into it. So man, I have been here in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands for six months now. The black sit has been real. Everyone wants to say hi to Garvey. Garvey. Oh, there he is. Garvey, you wanna say hi? <laughs> anyway. The Black Set has been real. It has been real emotionally, spiritually, physically. Um, it has really changed pretty much all of my relationships <laughs> and my relationship with myself. Um, it's been really transformational. I'm about to, I'm about to get in this little tree. Alco, is that a horse over there? Or is that a cow, my nigga? Hold on. Help. Garvey, we need to walk this way. Hold on. Because I don't know what's going on over there. Hold on. Hold on. Garvey. Let's go, baby. Anyway. Whoa. I can't even get into the damn video. Horse is peeking out of the damn okay anyway so what i was trying to say was it's been six months um and we've been down here and it's been really transformational um so i want to go over the areas that it's been transformational for me you know what i'm saying so number one i would say that this journey oh it's a wise oh it's a bunch of them come on garvey um this journey has definitely been transformational for me spiritually first and foremost um we have really 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 had to tap in and be i'm sorry y'all i haven't seen this little clandestine area back here look like the bunny man live back there let me get the hell away from here um <laughs> Um, dependent on the Lord um, grounded spiritually and there have been so many obstacles <laughs> y'all just don't even know you know you be thinking oh I see them out there posting videos they on the beach I see them out there posting video Garvey that look like a cave bring your ass I see them out there um you know posting that they riding the, they cruising around on boats and that's all true <laughs> we do do those things but there also have been times when we were not sure how we was gonna pay the rent there was also times right around our six month mark where we wanted to give up and we were really reconsidering our life choices and determining whether or not this was even the right move for us um, and in those times, we really had to get very still and get in prayer. And I, I think it was in that moment when we decided this is it and we kind of planted our feet. That's when things started turning around. That's when the energy shifted. Do all things through Christ. Because we'd, we'd have made a whole, you know, journey across the ocean. Nick and I don't work. We ain't got no job. We ain't got no jobs. I stopped working back in August of 2020. And Nick stopped working in November of 2020. 
and he was not able to get unemployment. I was able to get a little unemployment, which was helpful, in addition to starting an Airbnb business, which has been clutch, clutch as hell, because basically, um, that Airbnb business pays our rent. <laughs> um, but as with anything, it's up and down. You know, you have feasts and you have famine. So again, we've still had to learn to depend on the Lord and his provision for us. So that's number one. My spiritual faith has definitely increased. Oh, let's take a little break, Garvey. It's been, that was a bit of a walk. I didn't expect that park to be that big, did you? Garvey, Garvey, did you expect it to be like that? I know I did. No, let's stand under this tree for a minute. It's, it's shady right here. Shoot. Come here. Let's go stand up under this tree full of termites. See the termite nest, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna hope they don't fall out into my braids. The second area that I think has really been transformational for me specifically um, is in my eating habits. So I've definitely lost weight here. If I haven't lost weight, I've definitely lost fat. I don't have a scale, so I can't really tell if I've actually lost weight, weight but I can see changes in my body. Um, and I don't go out and exercise a lot, although I do take RB for walks, but it's not nearly as often as it should be. Um, I can definitely say, <clears throat> excuse me, that I feel littler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My legs used to be hams, now they chicken legs. Now, man, I got chicken, they drumsticks. <laughs> I used to have hams, now I got drummies. Oh, y'all can see. Oh, you can see my drummies. Them is my drummies. They think at the top, but they skinny at the bottom like a chicken leg. But anyway, they still cute though. Um, we definitely eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. We eat less processed food because it's less readily available. And everything in the grocery store is exorbitantly high. Like super unnaturally, unreasonably high. So because of that, we don't nearly as often buy prepackaged food because we just simply can't afford it. And that's just a short and tall of it. Nick the slim down, you know what I'm saying? I can hug my man all the way in. We can bear hug all the way in. Whereas before I used to hug him like this. And that was fine. I loved him like that. That was okay. And he loved me like that. We just hug like this. <laughs> now we can hug in. We can hug chest to chest now, belly to belly. <laughs> so that's how I know we both slim down. My son loves fruit. Like, if I buy, I don't know, a bag of six apples today, tomorrow there will be one. He's expensive. <laughs> but I would rather it be expensive to feed him fruit than it be expensive to feed him, you know, junk or anything like that he's not like a big meathead he's not big on like you know steaks and hamburgers and things like that he just loves fruit so i look forward to planting him an orchard <laughs> so he can just take his booty out back you know what i'm saying and um and get whatever he needs so that's number two um we've definitely changed the way that we eat now, I would say the third major area that's been impacted by this move has definitely been my marriage. It's definitely been my marriage. So, in full transparency, Nick did not want to come. I won't say that he didn't want to come because he hates when I say that. Let me get by this tree so we get a little bit more wind shear. I won't say that he did not want want to come I will say he was extremely reluctant to leave our American comforts so where I left in August he stayed in that 4,000 square foot house by himself till November 
Now, granted, he was he was you know packing up our last things and whatever, whatever. But in the big scheme of things, even he will tell you he was dragging his feet. He did not um, at that time have the faith that he has now. So he wasn't really sure what his employment situation was going to be like here. He was afraid to leave his stable job that he hated. <laughs> it provided security for him, even though he hated it. Um, and I was just tired of him being tired. I was tired of him hating his job, complaining about his job. Um, his blood pressure was high. Like it was, it was really becoming a situation for his health. Um, he wasn't sleeping well. He wasn't eating well. He was at his desk, you know, so many hours out of the day. Stop it, dog. This dog like to rub his booty and shit. If he sees shit on the ground and it don't belong to him, he like to rub his body in it so that he can, you know, put his scent on it. You better come here. I'm not about to take you home and give you, you want your bath anyway, but we ain't doing no full bath because you want to rub a dookie. Garvey, get your life together, brother. You tripping, tripping right now. Anywho. So yeah, so that has been really um, transformational for us, for our marriage, because he had to come down here. He had to leave that job. He had to depend on the Lord because I wouldn't come back. <laughs> and it really wasn't like an ultimatum situation. Like it's me or your job. Like it wasn't like that, but he wants to be with me and I want to be with him. And I made it clear that I'm not coming back. So he had to make the decision to go ahead and quit his job. <laughs> Now, the other piece of that puzzle, it wasn't just me being selfish. <laughs> it wasn't just me being selfish. The other piece of that puzzle is that his job, um, although he had been work from home for a year, all of a sudden his job wanted him to come back into the office for a couple of days a week. And Nick was high risk for COVID. And our son has asthma. And so we were like, uh, no. Like, why, why does he need to come back into the office? Like, I really don't understand what the what the virtue is of him coming into the office two days a week to do a job that he's been doing seven days a week or six days a week at home from his desk. Like, there's no benefit to him coming in there. And so when he let them know that, and he was like, listen, um, my family is about to make a move. Really, we had already left. My family is about to make a move, and I need to find out, you know, can I stay remote and can I move? And they were like, no. Now, mind you, other people have been allowed to stay remote due to medical or this, that, and the other. But when he said, listen, my family is moving and I need to be able to stay remote, they were like, no, they denied him. So, he was like, well, I guess this ain't going to be the job for me. So, he had to go. So, that was a pivotal moment in our relationship um, of us it was traumatic it was traumatic for him to leave that job it was traumatic for him um you know as a man not to have stable employment that ain't the type of man that he is <laughs> so not to have a job and not to have stable employment and not to be able to provide for him his family um as the breadwinner was traumatic for him completely I'm like, you know, babe, we're going to be all right. God going to take care of us, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't care. And he, he just really struggled with it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And so it was hard. But it forced us to become closer. It forced us to talk more and be more transparent. It forced us to investigate some of the things that had been difficult for us that maybe we didn't talk about as much as we should because we ain't had number time i'm gonna say that the fourth way um that this this move has been really transformational for me um is in the way that i see myself as a black american african american hebrew american all of that all of those things all of those ethnicities nationalities all of that um, it's really galvanized me in a way in understanding who I am as a person, um, how I identify myself as Hebrew, how I identify myself as American, um, and what that means in the context of living somewhere where that identity doesn't exist. 
it has definitely formed me up and kind of rooted and grounded me where uh, before I thought that leaving the US would help me to shed my American identity maybe uh, reconnect you know with my ancestors since majority of black people who came to the United States um, as slaves came through the Caribbean for seasoning and then those people got dropped off and then after they were seasoned and taught what to do and this and the other then they were shipped off to the United States from there so I was like okay coming to the Caribbean I'm gonna get to know you know some cultural practices that we might have left or forgotten once we were fully seasoned and moved our ass to um, and I have not found that to be the case. <laughs> what I have found to be the case is that I appreciate the culture here. Um, it is very different than being American black, for sure, which I did not expect that. Um, but it has allowed me to separate myself in a positive way to own my own identity. I would say the last way i don't say the last the only thing i think of right now because <laughs> i mean there, there's so many things that have changed um and that have been beneficial and eye-opening etc about this experience but i would say one of the most important parts of um this part of our journey has been a desire to live life every day um, with joy and just being very focused and disciplined about cultivating it. Um, I do all of the things. <laughs> Anything that I could think of that I really want to do and that um, is interesting to me, I just do it. I think that comes from this journey, but also just turning 40 and realizing that, okay, since half your life is over right now, so this is a great time to like do things because your knees is only going to last a little while longer. The bull by the horns right now, and we just do things, and I love that. And I say to Nick all the time, because my life has become so simple here, um, I say to him only all the time, my only desire right now and my only responsibilities right now are to date my man and pay rent. <laughs> That's it. Like, if we got a place to live... And me and Nick can go out to a little beach high cafe. You know what I'm saying? If we can go, you know, a little hike. If we can if we can do things together and grow together and just like be in love and just date. At 10 years into our marriage, I'm winning. Like that for me is winning. I don't have, I won't say I don't have a whole lot of other expectations because I do. Of course, I have a bunch of dreams and goals and this, that and the other. But I will say that this journey has really put in perspective for me how the very simple things are the most important things. Spending time with my husband and my son are the most important things. Whereas before this, I spent so much time away from them building businesses, you know, becoming a fashion designer and all of that was great I mean it was glorious and you know I did well at all of those things but at the sacrifice of my marriage and spending time with my son now that's paramount to me I don't care about nothing else if I don't never get a job which I actually start my new job today <laughs> I got a job again and another one on the way, I might have two jobs because I got goals. I got money, I got spend. But anyway, oh, it's hot in here. You hot, Garvey? I'm sorry, baby. I got my baby in here. Look, he's panting. You want? Can give you a little air, brother. Here you go. Hey, okay. I realized I had to dig on car windows up because it was loud outside. But yeah, the simple things are like super, super important to me right now. And if I never worked again. But we had just enough money to have somewhere to live, have our lights on, have food in the house, and be happy just like being with each other and doing things together. That would be enough.
that would honestly be enough. And in my 20s and 30s, that was never enough. And I often was very, very jealous of people that I saw, like, you know, living in hood neighborhoods or whatever, and you just ride by and they just be sitting on their porch just existing or playing cards or just drinking beer and people watching. And I honestly was very jealous. Like, how can they just be like that? And you could see that they were happy. Like, they were living happy lives. They talking about people. They laughing. They cackling. Like, they playing dominoes. Like, they were happy. And I was so jealous of that type of contentment because I was just so driven but in being so driven I was never satisfied because I was always on to the next project I could never enjoy one project and just be like oh that was great I did good at that I'll be on to the next on to the next on to the next. never satisfied so now having taken a, a, a step back not worked for seven months sat my booty down and just be I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm not excited about starting this job today, although I realize that W-2 employment will get me to the next level because I need a mortgage to get this land. So once I get this land, then I can start working again. I can plant my damn food forest, go in the backyard and garden and live my best life. But for right now, you girl got to get focused for the next 18 to 24 months so that we can wrap all these you know dreams and desires up in a nice and tidy bow so that has been probably the fifth thing is learning to be comfortable with less so St. Croix thank you for that <laughs> thank you for changing my life in these five really key areas I think it has made me a more introspective kind and fulfilled person so there's that y'all be intentional about your own journey um y'all got any comments for me you know what i'm saying i know y'all have seen the journey if y'all want to you know talk about have any comments about things to happen blah 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 holla at your girl i would love to hear about it see y'all next time